Hi everybody, I'm Taylor. If y'all do not know already, we are putting a 916 IS engine on an RV9, as you can see in the background. And there's quite a bit of work that we've already done, but I'm gonna start making some longer videos to try to describe some of the things that we're encountering for this installation. I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that this is gonna be a good uh, instructional video kind of style. Um, I've been uploading some shorts to YouTube and those are just kind of snippets of what we've been doing, but I wanna do a little bit more detailed stuff. So let's get right into it. So far, what we've had to do is remove the Lycoming powered power plant essentially from the firewall. And a lot of that had to, to do with uh, inside the cockpit, uh, underneath the panel, there was a lot of wires and, and that's gonna vary from installation to installation. What we did here is we made sure that we uh, removed anything that wasn't gonna stay. And so for this particular installation, pretty much everything had to go. The customer that is having us do this for him is going to replace this instrument panel with a brand new glass panel. Basically two G3Xs on either side and some radio stack in the center. And I can show you more details of that and some renderings that he has made. But essentially what that meant was is that we could disconnect the majority of the engine monitoring equipment associated with that Lycoming powered power plant. And you can see it up there. And if you're interested in buying it, I don't think it's sold yet. Uh, I think the owner would be interested in selling it for sure. And what we've done so far is we've done a few things. We took that engine off. We use a engine crane like this to do that. And that's actually a pretty good way of uh, installing, or not installing, storing that uh, firewall forward package there. And you can just literally bolt it to the pallets as you can see if I get closer, there's some bolts going through. That's actually going through the engine mount. So we basically just removed everything forward of that. We will be salvaging these wheels and this these components uh, and re, we'll, we'll reuse those. But this is an old style, and I can show some pictures, an old style um, landing gear system, nose, nose gear system. And Vance has come out and done a better landing gear nose wheel that actually has some rubber shocks and you can see this is one of the engine mounts that we're going to be installing for the 916 installation and you can see down on the bottom there's a place to mount the the newer style nose gear and so that would be something that would be a requirement by anybody who's doing a retrofit you need to buy the new style nose wheel gear and that's very important and so what we did we took everything off the firewall almost a clean slate um, and we started by putting some holes in different places and my objective is to have some templates that you can print out to scale that can be used to place these different electronic components for the 916 on the firewall the same way every single time and so I'll show you some videos as well um, some pictures of the location for the first electronic component which is this lovely ECU here and you can see I've already got some bolts inside and I added some nut plates to the firewall which makes this very easy and that's where that goes and then over here you see there's a paper template it's, it's kind of limp but that paper template is for the fuse box for the 916 and so there's some other things that need to go on here like um, a gas escalator fuel filters battery box uh, relays um, not relays, excuse me, starter solenoids um, for the master solenoid and also the starter on the engine. And we're going to slowly but surely start adding these components to the firewall before we install the engine mount and before we install the engine. You can see over here we have the engine in its crate. hasn't been touched. We're going to leave it just like this, all buttoned up until we are ready to take it out. So as you also see, some other additional work required by this installation is to remove the fuel tank. And the reason for that is because we have to add a return line 
You see here, we only have two ports coming out of the fuselage and therefore also into the fuel tank. And those two ports are, one of them is a vent line and the other one is just a feed line. And so there's no return on the Lycoming power uh, plant and the Rotex 916 requires you to have a return line. And that's because it's a fuel injected system and it's pushing a lot of fuel through the system than it's actually using. It actually uses very little fuel in comparison, but the fuel system is consistently bypassing fuel and that requires us to put that fuel back into the tanks. Long story short, the best way we found is to remove the leading edge tanks for this RV9. And that was a little difficult at first, but really it's practical, more practical than what we thought we were gonna have to do, which is remove the whole wings. And it, what it requires you to do is to remove three bolts in each of these stations, right? There's a total of 18, and these go through the web of the spar on the wing. And there's access panels underneath the wing that you can gain access to the bolts. Now, the good thing about this, this design is that these are captured by a nut plate on the tank side. And I can show you that right here. You've got the two tanks on either side, and you can see in there, these are captured nut plates, which is very nice. So all you have to do is remove the three bolts and that is an AN3 bolt requiring a 3 8 wrench. It's nice to have a wrench that's kind of a stubby one. It's not a lot of room in some of these bays, in particular this one. There's like a stiffening rib right here, I think for being able to stand on this, right? They added some st stiffeners in here. And so this area is really tight. This, this, you have plenty of room between this rib and this rib, but this one much tighter. And so having a ratchet that is, has a really short handle is really nice to get in there. Also, a fine tooth ratchet is also a good idea. And so what we did is we removed the tanks. And now that we've removed the tanks, we can drill and add the return line, okay? Some other things we had to do before removing the tanks is, and this is a mess, I do apologize, is we had to disconnect the aileron push rod. And doing that gave us access, with a little bit more access in these panels, right? So you can see it's pushed up and out of the way. And that's super important because it's really tight in here. And especially you're gonna have to, on every other uh, set of bolts, you're gonna have to reach your hand in through the ribs and get it through this way. There's only an access panel, there's only three access panels underneath the wing. And so there's, there is some limited access to some of the bolts, but it's manageable and we did get it done. I would say this whole tank removal process probably took us, I had two guys working on this, so myself and another gentleman, actually the owner of the aircraft, air, air, uh, excuse me, the owner of the aircraft, um, John, and the both of us, it took us I think about two and a half, maybe three hours for both of these tanks. Um, but like I said, you have to get that aileron push rod out of the way, and so that requires you to disconnect it here at the stick in addition to removing it here at the bell crank, okay? This is the, the farthest out inspection cover. And this one actually has some uh, brackets and it has a servo in there for a um, autopilot system. But we had to disconnect both ends of that push rod and then move it out of the way. Some other things to mention are pretty simply seen, which is that there's a gap seal that needs to be removed. Uh, you have to remove the fuel lines. Um, you'll have to use a super long extension for these three bolts. You can actually get to it from the gap between the fuselage and the wing with a really long extension. And these are captive. They have a nut plate on the back side, which is really nice. So it's the same theme for these, but these ones are exposed between this gap. And so that's something that's really nice about that. Um, I think that's everything. I can't think of anything else that we've had to do so far, but you know what? Stay posted. Uh, I'll continue to do these kind of update videos to describe what we're doing and why we're do doing them. In addition to keeping up with the shorts um, so that we can show you everything that needs to be done.